Hello and welcome to another episode of How To Beat and in this episode we're going to be taking a look at Battletoads for the Game Boy. This is a game developed by Rare, released in 1991 and is probably best known for its high difficulty as with all the games in the Battletoads series. Um, as far as I know this is a unique game in the series, it's not a port of like the NES version or anything. Um, and it's kind of a blend of uh, genres, it's got some beat em up stages, some shooting stages and you'll see anyway as we go through it so without further ado let's crack on and see if we can't beat it so we start with a uh, beat em up stage and you've got two buttons obviously with it being a game Boy game a jump button and an attack button um, I can could pick up that weapon but I'm not going to because I find the boss of this stage when we get to it a little bit harder when you've got um, the weapon because it's got kind of a slow wind up and I find it's just easier to just have um, um, my uh, hands and fists, or hands and fists, feet and fists. So, a kind of signature of the series is these big, exaggerated um, finishing attacks. Generally, in this game, I try to avoid triggering them because, they, again, they have like a slow wind up, and often enemies can get an attack in um, whilst you're sort of doing your big wind up, like it just happened there. So generally the way I use to avoid triggering them is to attack and jump at the same time. So here you want to stay low, just let the guy shoot his projectiles and then just spam the attack button. There's a guy down here, so we're just beating him up, it takes a couple of goes on this guy. When there's only one enemy around you can, you can do the big exaggerated thing, it's not a problem. Uh, this guy with the truncheon. He generally follows a pattern of uh, one, two, three, pause, one, two, and then a longer pause. And then, so it's after that one, two that you want to attack. So let's get a little bit closer. And then attack in. So what I did there was a barge attack. So you double tap direction to run. And then if you double tap direction and then attack, then you get like this barge attack thing. So wait for this guy to come down. And then it's going to beat him up. Two of these guys annoy me. Yeah, it's quite easy for them to get hit in there. Um, so coming up is going to be one of those arm truncheon things. So I want to be running and then do a big jump out of the way and then get as close as we can without getting hit. One, two, three, one, two, and then oh, and then abort. You want to get your barge attack in. Okay, abort again. One, two, three, one, two, and then there we go. If you don't get that barge attacking first, then you'll probably get hit on you, which is not ideal. So this is the boss, and generally the way to deal with him oh, we got him, is to jump and attack. So just, just, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't explain that very well. Um, as he's, he'll kind of keep jumping up and down basically, you want to kind of just jump out of the way and then attack him while you're in the air, does a ton of damage. That's the boss I find harder with um, with the axe, I find it just easier to attack over my hands and feet. So this is now we're into like a side scrolling sort of stage, um, you can kind of rapid fire by just tackling the button and then I just move up and down in this middle section and if any sort of slip through the net just make sure to avoid them. If you hold the button down you do a charge attack. But I find for this bit, um, <clears throat> it's easier to just uh, mash the button. Okay, now this next bit, there's just one of these little uh, things here, and you can only damage them once they open up um, to shoot you. So just try and catch him and then just move out the way with his projectile. Okay, so now's the really tricky bit, so I'm going to have to concentrate here. This is a bit like the turbo tunnel in the NES version if you've if you've heard of that or played it. As in it's just difficult. <laughs> I 
Perfect. Right, okay, so the, the way to deal with that is to just make sure that um, you've, you've successfully passed um, the one that's coming at you. So wait to make sure you, it's just all the way out of the way before you move up or down. More often than not, if you're getting hit, you're probably moving too early and, and crashing into the one before it's actually passed you, which is easy to do because you sort of panic about the one that's coming up ahead. There is, you know, enough time. So just try and make sure that it's, it's definitely cleared. You've definitely cleared it. Here, similar strategy to the first one. They come at you a bit quicker, so it's a little bit harder. Now we're up to the boss. So I'd usually just use a charge attack and then just finish off the guns with um, spamming the button. And if you need to just hang back a bit, hang back a bit, then do that. It's not a big deal. All right, and then you can kind of you can kind of just hang out there and just shoot down the projectiles, but it's a little bit risky, so it's a bit safer to just pick your opportunities and wait for gaps and use the charge shot do a lot of damage in one go. There's no timer or anything, so you can take your time. There we go, and he's done. <clears throat> okay, so in this level there's a lot of these fire things on the ground, uh, so you want to avoid uh, touching those. So I think each sort of beat-em-up stage has a unique kind of finishing animation and in this one it's that pummel them into the ground and then um, kick him off. Um, it's not really helpful on this stage because there's a lot of bottomless pits around so it's quite easy to accidentally kick yourself into a pit so again I try and avoid triggering them uh, which I didn't do a very good job of there but I'm going to move to that side because otherwise I would have kicked myself into that fire. So here I'm move, so I'll try and get this, the fire off the screen and then I'm going to jump over the top of him as he swoops down. Oh, didn't get him in time. Luckily these things don't do too much damage. Right, and there's a guy here and we just don't trigger a combo because you'll probably fly into the, oh, fall down the pit. Sorry about the, um, the daylight behind me. Uh, not like I do about that unfortunately. I've got the curtains closed but it's still creeping through. Um, okay, so with these you want to be, just to be safe, do a, a, a running jump, it's a lot bigger. It's surprisingly easy to just miss the rope. More on these ones really, where they're a little bit further away, but just as a habit, I just always do a running jump into those. Generally, with platforming in this game, you want to be doing your um, um, running jumps if you can. There's not always room to do a little running jump, but if there is, you want to be doing it. Uh, okay, so now we're up to the boss. So we can just jump and attack. A bit like dealing with the. Um, tornadoes you just want to be make sure you're standing still so you don't accidentally jump forward into him and when he does a slam attack that's when he's gonna switch sides of the screen so it'll kind of fly straight overhead and you can't really attack him during that stage and he does quite a lot of damage so you just want to make sure you're just not jumping just let him pass overhead and then just carry on doing what I was doing so here there's not actually room to do a, a running jump well there is but it's a little bit risky so I tend to just um, just do as big a jump as I can. Ah, didn't actually do it that time. There we go. It's up to you whether you want to try doing a, a running jump there. I used to always do one, but then there was a few times where I just ended up losing a couple of lives. So I find it easier to not. Um, so here I want to do a running jump just so I have less platform to do the. Um, it's very twitchy in the air this game when you're trying to land. Um, so the less of it you have to do, the better. So that's why I kind of skip as many of these um, platforms as I can. If I can jump over one, I will. 
Alright, so go wait for the end. There we go. And then we're on to the jet ski section. So you want to start low and then it kind of follows a roughly zigzag sort of pattern. Um, you can jump with the A button and if you hold it you jump a lot further. So you're in the air, in the air a lot more. Makes it obviously a lot safer. So generally when you jump you want to be doing a holding the button. So then you get to the whirlpool section, so I generally hang in this top left corner and then just wait as long as I can before jumping over the whirlpools because otherwise what happens is if you get too far ahead of them they kind of weave back and forth and um, it's easy to get hit from behind when you're not concentrating on them. So I hang back as, as long as I can. That was the last of them. Then we go into this section where these these tentacles kind of moving up and down. Just got to pick your opportunities and swoop through. Uh, you can kind of rush through or hang back, whatever you find easiest for any given one. And then it's the same again with these things. Just take your time and shoot through if you need to shoot through and hang back if you need to hang back. But it shouldn't give you any problems really. So we want to get close enough that we can just spam the attack button here. Is that close enough? Yeah, there we go. So you see his health bar going down and then move back a little bit. So just give him room to go to his second form where he just transforms to this head and then he'll just keep diving towards you like this and then you just attack him when he gets close enough. Nice and straightforward. And there we go. This is the worst stage in the game and possibly the worst stage ever created by any game developer in any game ever. Um, luckily there's a little trick you can use to cheese it. It's not easy, so I don't feel bad for using it. Um, the legitimate way to do this game is you basically have to follow this maze. This uh, bouncing brain thing is chasing after you and you can see it's um, health bar at the bottom and it will slowly lose health as it's bouncing. It takes ages and if there's any hesitation on your part as you're going around this maze, which is really easy to do, if there's any sort of miss jump or anything like that, it's going to catch you and it's going to kill you. It just one shots you. It's so unforgiving. It's so easy to lose a bunch of lives. So, luckily, there's a little way to cheese it, which I definitely recommend doing. And that's what I'm going to be doing here. Um, as I say, it's, it's not actually that easy to do, so I don't feel too bad doing it. So you want to drop down through all these zigzags and then wait till there's a slightly longer zigzag. Uh, I, was too, I should have been further to the left there but that was the right one. So let's try that again. Okay, so drop down through the zigzags. Obviously the quicker you do this the, the more time you've got to prepare. There we go. So you just want to hang around, wait for him to bounce next to you and as he's up in the air, run beneath him and let him pass you. So now I can safely traverse the level without having to worry too much. And you can kind of see what you have to deal with within chasing you. He's not always directly behind you, but so it gets into an annoying situation sometimes where you'll, you'll find yourself just make a slight hesitation, like you, you'll um, psych yourself out where there's a jump coming up and there wasn't one or something like that, or you just miss a jump and have to do it again and it won't kill you immediately but it will catch up to you later in the stage because it's like on a set path and sometimes it's it's a little way behind you and then other times it's literally right behind you but it's it's pretty horrific you your vision is so obscured by the, the kind of small screen you don't you don't get much warning of what's what turns are coming up ahead and that's kind of what makes it so difficult. 
have done it legitimately um, a few times, but it's, it's, it's so punishing and just not fun that once I discovered that little trick, I said I discovered it, I uh, saw someone else do it, and I thought, well, that is the way to do that from now on. You can see how long this stage goes on for. And like I say, any little hesitation, any little slight wrong turn, or just taking a little bit too long on the jump, or just getting snagged on something, yeah, you're dead. But there we go, there's the end. Okay, so we're gonna be on um, dangling from a rope now. The important thing to know about this level is that um, uh, your jump button is now a kick button. It's really, really important to know that because a lot of these enemies are much easier to deal with when you're kicking them rather than trying to attack them. Um, that's because the, the kick attacks down, whereas your normal attack attacks to the side. So generally you're getting hit whilst um, attacking if you're using your sword. So there you want it to be, just make sure you're on the left side of the screen because that's where the path starts. If you were on the right side of the screen as that's, that bit started dropping down, you, you kind of get into a dead end where you have to get hit by the spikes. Um, you, you kind of want to be spamming the attack button because there's enemies in this that will one-shot you. These things here, these blobs that kind of fly across the screen. If they touch you, it doesn't matter how much health you've got, it will um, kill you. They kind of just vaporize you. Make sure you're just spamming the kick button at all times just in case they catch you out. There's a spike below me, so we'll move quickly. And then move into the gap. There we go. Nice. Right, so the boss is going to come in, so I want to run underneath him and try and get into the, him into this pattern of just jumping left and right. And then you run underneath him and punch him. If he lands on you, Good chance it's going to kill you. One just straight out. Oh, we might have messed it up there. Got away with it. Oh, that was lucky. Luckily, if I think if you're dead underneath him, um, he will just evaporate your your um, health bar. But if he just gets a glancing hit on you, it's not too bad. Okay, so where are we now? Oh yeah. So this one. I don't have a fantastic foolproof method for, unfortunately. Just, but luckily the start bit you can kind of just run through. Here I have to take a little bit of care. Generally, worry more about making the jumps than getting hit by the things. You've got should well. I've currently got enough lives in hand that I don't have to worry too much about losing them. You get three lives per, per continue and I'm still on my first continue. But even so, it's really difficult to avoid all of them. So just make sure you're not losing a whole health bar by um, not making the jump. Because you lose a little bit of health if you hit the, um, the spinning axes, but you'll lose your entire health by falling down a hole, obviously. Got kind of lucky there, I actually ran through a spike. I'm gonna get hit there. So there's the first continue. Obviously this isn't a, a no death run or a speed run. I'm not that good at the game. But you know, this is just like a just a general sort of playthrough, I suppose. Just hopefully I can help someone just who's always wanted to beat the game, help them beat it, hopefully. So here, this is a bit like the first boss, except he does a lot more damage. You can kind of stun lock him into this kind of pattern. But you, to be honest, you're not doing a ton of damage when you're doing that, so it's great if you can get him upside down like that. Um, I didn't explain that very well, did I? But to, truth be told, a lot of the time I'm, I'm kind of just winging it there. I'm just jumping and punching and um, 
doing what I can. Okay, so this stage, I'm going to pause it. This is sort of a very high concentration stage, so it's going to be really difficult for me to explain it as I'm doing it. If you press, you've got jetpack, and if you press up, you boost, and um, if you press down, I think you kind of just come to a stop. Um, you have to be very quick in this. Um, you have a quite a strict timer. Where you lose time is, first of all, not boosting. You, anytime you can boost, you want to be boosting, but also you lose a lot of time in these shooting sections. There's certain bits where you stop to shoot down enemies. The key is memorizing where the enemies are going to be so that you line yourself up uh, for when you get there. But I'll show you anyway because it's going to be the, the best way of doing it. Probably not going to do this first time. But yeah, you want to zoom through this section. Oh, we should go. I always do that. Right. Go there. They're on the left. And then bring that goes to the right. Shoot them down. Oh, we should go. Okay. So let's try that again. Um, shouldn't be rushing too much here. Right. Let's take my time a little bit more there. This is the kind of bit where I really need lives in hand. I don't worry too much about getting hit by those. It's one of those collateral damage situations. Take that one on the chin. Take it here. Right, and then they're in the middle. And then sometimes they get stuck there. Right, and then through that one. Through that one. Through that one. Ooh, that's a bit of delay there. I might not do this. No, I'm probably not going to do this one more time. Oh, I just about made it. Okay, so you can see it's just it's, the time is very strict, and as I, as I said, you you kind of just need to know where the enemies are going to be. Um, the most important one I would say is um, the sort of first set of enemies is where you can lose a lot of time. Um, sorry, um, you. Uh, I think there it starts up in the middle and then you want to immediately go left because there's two on the left and I find it, I, if I miss those ones you spend so much time chasing them um, across the screen so that, that's the kind of key one to get but other than that there's not a lot I can do to help there other than just to show you how it's done so this is actually the last boss so the first thing I've got to do is oops I don't want to be doing that and close right I want to be running away and grabbing this the attack button so what he does is he kind of does his little pea shooter shots and then wait for till they stop and run in and get maybe a few hits in and then run back. He can still get you with his grenades annoying me back here, up there, and they're very random. Can't really tell where it's going to be. So just do your best to just be unpredictable, I suppose. Get your hits in and then move back. Oh, I got a bit greedy there, and a bit early. I'll just keep crashing on there. Yeah. You get unlucky with those grenades. Sometimes they're just they'll they'll be nowhere near you. And then the next thing to do is to attack his head. Kind of play it safer than I'm doing to be honest, but yeah, you kind of move away, get a few hits in, move away, get a few hits in, move away. I know I've got kind of lives in hand, so I'm not worrying too much, but he is a little bit unpredictable anyway, to be honest. So I might just finish him off now, yeah, maybe not. and then he starts chucking him out like crazy at the end. I don't really think there's a pattern to it. I think it's just a case of um, hitting him until he's dead. And there we go. It wasn't the cleanest um, attempt at the last boss, to be honest. But I got kind of unlucky with some of the earlier sections. Generally, you do lose 
some health at the end because they, they the grenades are just flying all over the place. Um, I think it's random, from what I understand, it's random um, where they fly at the start. So um, I was getting hit quite a lot at the start where normally I probably wouldn't. But this is the ending to Battle Toast on the Game Boy, something that most 10 year olds who bought this game in 1991 probably never saw. <laughs> I'm guessing because it's, it's a tricky game. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if there's any episodes of how uh, how to beat that you'd like me to do any Game Boy games that have been um, tripping you up your entire life and you want to see how a normal person goes about doing them obviously there's plenty of no death runs and speed runs of all of these kind of games but I find um, that sometimes you just want to learn how to beat it you don't need to know how to beat it perfectly you just want to know how to beat it and that's what this kind of series is supposed to do so anyway thanks for watching um, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe or like the video or comment or whatever it is. Tell me about your memories of this game. Um, but I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.